parliament who are here, the members of the county assemblies who are here led by the various speakers, especially the speaker of Nyamira, my brothers and sisters, the, the regional commissioner, the county commissioner, commissioners, and I have seen quite a number from Kisi, at least I've seen from Kisi and Nyamira, the assistant county commissioners, the deputy county commissioners, our brothers and sisters who have come here this morning. For me, I really do not know what to say. I'll say a few things later on. The only thing I can tell, I can tell you, brothers and sisters who are here, is that we've lost a visionary leader. We've lost one of the best people in this world. And sometimes when we go to funerals, we have this habit of saying somebody is nice even when they were not nice. But here we are talking about a real nice person. Somebody that you would abuse but he could keep on smiling. And uh, I have indicated that when the time comes, I'll be able to say a few things because I have been with this man, known him for about 50 years. So ladies and gentlemen, we as governors are also extremely sad because this our fourth governor who has left us since we started the devolution journey. And indeed, knowing how few we are, we can just ask you and we are begging you to pray for us because those numbers are not good for us. But again, we are all children of God, and this is our journey in this world. We are transiting in this world, so we pray to God to help all of us. Let me stop there and ask that uh, we now start the church service, then we will do other things after the church service. I'm here with Okongo Mogeni, I'm also here with the area MP, Vincent Kemosi, and will guide you after the church service. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and may God bless our brother, and may he travel in peace. Uh, the church, the presiding pastor, I think it should be Dr. Samuel Makori, or your president, if he's here, you can come and take over, please. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, His Excellency Governor Ongwai. Fellow mourners, I want to greet you. Good morning. Allow me to recognize few leaders from church, churches that have come to mourn our governor. I'll start with Father Bernard to represent all the Catholic community that he may stand and probably say hi. With us also, we have Pastor Jonas Arama, who used to work also closely. May you stand and salute. Pastor Samuel Monyoro also used to work closely with the late governor. At this time, I want to welcome Pastor Dr. Ali Thomas Nyokundi, who is the executive di director of Nyamira Westfield, so that he can be able to usher in the speaker of the hour. Pastor Karibu. Uh, our guests and the entire family of our beloved uh, leader who is already asleep. We want to remark that our leader was a great leader and also from the church point of view he was very instrumental in uh, ensuring that churches are reconstructed besides other things. At this point we want to 
bring the comfort which comes from the Lord through the scripture and in relation to the family our leader from this part of the world which is known East Kenya Union Conference Dr. Samuel Makori will bring the words and the message that will comfort not only the family but each one of us because it is, it is only in the scripture where we can get comfort. All of us are subject to death. But as long as we believe in the Lord, still we have that hope that soon he will come. So Dr. Makori, you are welcome, Elder, so that you may comfort each one of us and more particularly the family. Dear mourners, the chair, co-chairs, led by His Excellency James Ngwai, the CS Interior and Coordination of National Government, all the county fraternity, led by the yet to arrive governor, all mourners, ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor and privilege and pleasure to lead this service as I was requested. The church brings deep condolences to the immediate family, those who have been left behind to live the life that God gave His Excellency John Yagarama, the extended family of the late governor, the county fraternities that His Excellency James said, there are few, but there are many, for seven of them, we want to bring condolences to that and more particularly to the Nyamira County Fraternity and the Kisi Nation, we want to bring condolences to the entire political fraternity, Kenya as a whole, and the religious fraternity. We have lost uh, a human being that God put here so that he can fulfill his part and then rest in the grave awaiting the resurrection of the saints and indeed all people as we read the opening hymn, the opening verse. Dear mourners, I want to bring to you a comforting message entitled Teach me how to die. Teach me how to die. A pastor once went to see his parishioner in a hospital. The parishioner was struggling with cancer. And the pastor didn't know how much cancer had ravaged the life of this parishioner. So he went to the reception and he was ushered to the world where he was, where she was. And when he reached there, he could not identify the lady. Because the lady, the pastor knew, was completely different from the lady that the pastor met. Because cancer had eaten up her flesh, had eaten up her bones and all the vitalities of life. And from the sunken eyes, she looked at the pastor and told the pastor in a very soft voice, Pastor, 
Teach me how to die. I know how to live, but I don't know how to die. So, Pastor, please teach me how to die. And dear mourners, I know people in this world know how to live, but they don't know how to die. And dying is the last thing that determines your destiny. When Jesus Christ comes a second time, as we sang, calling the roll up yonder, and we said, I will be there. Those who will be there are only those who know how to die and not just how to live. So this lady asked a very surprising question. And very monas, dear monas, parishioners can ask pastors very difficult questions. There, the pastor admitted, my dear parishioner, I'm sorry. I also don't know how, to, how people die. You have given me what to teach, what to, what, what to say. However, I know one who taught us how to die, and that is Jesus Christ. And this morning, dear fellow and fellow mourners of all walks of life, from the economic sector, from the political sector, from the social sector, from the religious sector, I want to take these few minutes to teach you how to die, for that is the only thing that determines your destiny when Jesus Christ comes. From the, from the book John 5, verse 28, we read these words, Do not marvel at this. And Jesus was talking about death, about people who sleep before he comes a second time. He told the mourners, do not marvel at this. It is not the sleeping of people that matters more than how they sleep. Or to use the most common word, it is not people uh, who die when we come to business as how they die. So following the request of the lady, I want to tell you that knowing how to die, and that is why I'm asking you to listen very attentively, even as we participate here, you discover how to die. And when you go home, if you have not started to prepare how to die, then from today on, you begin to prepare. Then it says, do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming when those who have died in the grave will, will hear his voice and come out. But he says they will be put in two groups. And the two groups stand for those who knew how to die and those who knew how to live only and did not know how to die. For those who knew how to die, they will be in the class, they said, some to everlasting life. And those who do not know how to die, those will be to everlasting damnation or everlasting fire. So this time, I want to tell you, is very important. Before I come to tell you how to die, because all of us will die one day, if Jesus would have not come a second time, it is important to know how to die. Let me take you to the Old Testament and teach you and tell you rather uh, how one person did not know how to die. A king went to a funeral like our uh, ranking officers in the government, like the president went to a funeral of his army general the king was King David, and the general was Abner. Abner was a general in the 
David's king, mini army. King David's king army. Abina had killed somebody accidentally. And they knew that in the economy of Israel, he was supposed to have run to specified places. And the specified places in the Bible were called cities of refuge. Cities of refuge were built for people who killed others accidentally to run to and hide from the wrath and revenge of the family members of the person killed accidentally. So Abna killed a person accidentally, but because he trusted in his army prowess, because he trusted in his arms, because he trusted in his uh, ammunition, he chose not to go to the place of refuge and walked outside openly. And one day, the revenging family member found Abna and killed him. So it was funeral day like today, when we are burying His Excellency John Yagarama. So the King David came to console the family, to mourn for his, uh, uh, his uh, general who had fallen because he lived there. And this is what he did. In the book of first, Second Samuel, the book of Second Samuel, chapter
ever making a statement that people know how to live. The only thing, the only question is, do you know how to die? And that the only thing, the only question is, do you know how to die? And that is what you need to know. And when we do a lot and make a statement, you turn around, even here, the putting on the mask, you are making a statement that I know how to die. When you sneeze, you run to hospital, you are making a statement, I know how to die. I mean, how to live. But the question is, do you know how to die? So the pastor told the lady, I also don't know how to, 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 to die. So I can't teach you. But I know one who knew how to die and taught us in scripture. That is the one I can tell you in his words. And this is Jesus Christ. All of us know, or most of us know, that our Savior Jesus Christ came here to offer a solution to our foreignness and sin, which was taking us to death. And so when he came here, he stayed here for 33 and a half years, teaching people how to live and subsequently how to die and die a safe death, which will end up in the resurrection of the saints when he comes a second time. So one time, they arrested him. They quickly judged him before Pilate, then Herod, then back to Pilate. And Pilate decided that he should be crucified. And that when the day came, it was on a Friday, like tomorrow, he was hanged on the cross. And uh, during that time, that is when Jesus Christ taught us how to die. And now I want to read that. When he was about to die, in Luke chapter 23, Luke chapter 23 and verse 46, he said, uh, or verse 45, 45, then the sun was darkened and the, the veil of the temple was torn in two, verse 46. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. Says, and when Jesus cried out and, uh, with a loud voice and said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. I commit my life. And so the pastor said, the safest way to die is to die in the hands of Jesus Christ, our Savior. It is to die in the hands of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. You make sure that a wise dying, a wise death, the death that can be rec recorded in the book of life in heaven, is the death of a person who has taken time to surrender his or her life to the hands of Jesus Christ. Otherwise, we can do all we can in this world. We can amass wealth in this world, and that's not bad. We can gain titles in this world, and that's not bad. That's why God gave us gifts. We can uh, 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 get several things expose our, ourselves, travel all over the world, third class, first class, or economic class, whatever it is, we can over the world the best we can, telling them how to live. But if you have not surrendered your life to the hands of Jesus Christ, when you die, it will be recorded in heaven as a foolish death. 
If God had to come to a funeral, like Jesus came to the funeral of Lazarus, he would have said, should John, should David, should Kezia have died like a fool? Why? Because you not take time in the busy life, you moved from stage, one stage of life to another. You moved from childhood to teenagehood. You moved from teenagehood to youthhood. You moved from youthhood to adulthood, then to old life, and you died before committing your life into the hands of Jesus Christ. And when you die, such are the ones who are put in the category of Abna, where mourners can say, this person has died like a fool. Elsewhere, a king died, and he said he died like a donkey. Why? Because a donkey does not have the mind to make decisions, does not have a time to, to, to read the Bible, does not have the mind to uh, make a decision. And that is why the Bible says he died like a donkey. That's why David cries in the funeral of Abner and says he died like a fool. And dear mourners, as you have come to the mourning of this hero that we have read in his obituary, do not go back. And if you have got to die tomorrow or next year or 10 years or 20 years to come, you die like a fool. You die like Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ was about to die, he said, into your hand, Lord, I commit my life. Take care of my life. The life hid in Jesus Christ is the only one which, when Jesus Christ comes, whether that person has died or is living, that is the life that will make sense. That is the life that will uh, see the king coming a second time and make a statement and uh, sing a song. The song that the saints will sing that day is only one who has known how to die. And I've told you how to die is make sure that as you move on from one stage of life to another, you make vision to accept Jesus Christ. And commit your life to his hands. Even as you go around your economic life, as you go about your political life, as you go about your, your, your religious life, you make sure that my, my life is hid in Jesus Christ. Otherwise, when you die, however rich you are, however known you are, however famous you are, if you die outside Jesus Christ, you die like a fool. And when Jesus Christ comes, you will not be among those who will look up and say these words I'm reading from Isaiah 5 and verse 9. Those who have taken time to know how to die, when Jesus Christ comes, whether they are in the graves or they are living, they will all be resurrected. And those who knew how to die will come together, millions and millions, because the Bible says our, our computing system will not have there. Then it says there will be myriads and myriads. Myriad is beyond, I don't know how many times, beyond billions. So they will come and stand and say these words recorded in Isaiah 25 and verse 9. And it says, And it will be said in that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We, uh, we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Only those who have learned how to die before they die, and I'm making that statement, those who have learned how to die before you die, what I'm saying that is you do not learn to die at the death point. You learn before you die. You learn before your time comes. 
when we are living here, moving and doing whatever God has given us for our living here, as we contribute to society and the government and the church, this is the time to make sure that we have learned how to die. We have committed our life to the hands of Jesus Christ. And so he told that lady, I don't know how long you will take, but if now you commit your life fully to the hands of Jesus Christ, then you know how to die. Then your question is answered. Then she said, Pastor, pray for me. I put my, my life in the hands of Jesus Christ. And when the pastor prayed and said amen, the lady closed her eyes and died. And the pastor was happy that I have taught this lady how to die, and she did exactly that before she died. And the pastor, like all pastors and religious leaders, are very happy when everybody says, Pastor, I want to surrender my life to the hands of Jesus Christ, even if I die tomorrow or a few hours from now or next year or years to come, I have confidence. There's one man, there's one man recorded in the Bible in uh, the book of Luke chapter 1 and that man was Simon from verse 24 on. He just was in the temple serving the Lord, contributing to the religious life. So the children, uh, the parents of Jesus Christ came in and brought Jesus Christ for dedication. And they handed over the child Jesus Christ to this old man, Simon. And the Bible tells us when Simon received Jesus Christ in his hands, he spoke these words. Now, sovereign, sovereign Lord, you can allow me to die for my eyes I've seen the salvation of God that was promised to our ancestors by the prophets of old. He said, now I am okay. Even if I die, I don't complain. No. Simon, having done the last bit that matters most, the critical uh, section of our life, that of receiving Jesus Christ, and having him in your life, you can confident with Simon, now I can die in peace, for my eyes have seen the salvation of the Lord. And the family members, I want to implore with you, if there is anybody who has not surrendered his or her life there, may today's service be a commitment time when you say to your hands, oh dear Lord Jesus Christ, I commit my life. If the extended family of Nyamira County and all counties and those people who are seated in this auditorium has not surrendered his or her life to Jesus Christ, even those of you who are watching us all over Kenya virtually, and all over the world, my commitment, I mean my plea to you as a pastor who is, organ I mean who is uh, presiding over this service, I'll tell you, brother, sister, know how to die. And the way to die is to commit your life to the hands of Jesus Christ. So that as you do life, as you go around life, whether you are healthy or sick, you have no problem. Whether you are serving the government from the economic sector, or from the political sector, or from the social sector, or from the religious sector, you can walk and rest assured that my life is in the hands of uh, Jesus Christ. And uh, all who have lost uh, His Excellency, John Yagarama, 
with a friend, a relative, a colleague, let us have our time today and say, I surrender to my, li my life to Jesus Christ so that we can have that. And then I want to ask for that commitment. Then we shall sing a song and commit the family to the hands of God. Let me ask those who are here and wherever you are, how many are saying today's service is a commitment service for my life. I choose to know how to die and commit my life in the hands of God. Let me see your hands. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now turn to page 30 of the booklet. And I would want us to sing that song. Then Dr. Nyakundi will just put the, the, the family in the hands of God. The Seventh-day Adventist Church, where uh, His Excellency was a member, does not run a service on behalf of the dead. No, we offer a service for those who are living. Because our Bible teaches us very clearly in Ecclesiastes 5, verse 9. That is why we do not have a service for the dead. And today's service is not for John Nyagarama. It is for those who are living. The Bible says, for the living, no, they will die. But the dead know nothing. That is why the church offers service for the living, not for the dead. And that is why we, our focus is on the living of the, uh, the, the late John Yangarama. So number, that is, uh, when you know that you have surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, you can say with the songwriter, it is well with my soul. And I want us to sing that one and sing it loud. Then we shall commit the family members before we continue with the service. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like billows roll, Whatever my Lord Thou art sought me to say It is well, it is well with my soul It is well with my soul Oh, it is well, it is well with my soul, my sin, oh, the joy of this glorious thought, my sin, not in part, but thou is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul, it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul, and Lord is that day when my faith shall be sent, the cloud a scroll the drum shall resound and the Lord shall descend even so it is well with my soul 
It is well with my soul. Oh, it is well. It is well with my soul. May God bless you if you have learned how to die before you die. Dr. Nyakunde, please come and put your... May I ask the immediate and extended family members, please to stand. We would have called you to the front, but because of COVID-19, we can't do so. This center is this. And when the prayer is done, then uh, His Excellency James Ngwai will come and take over. Let's bow as we pray. Our God and our Lord, we thank you that there is a time and season for every activity on earth. There is a time to be born and there is a time to die. One of the greatest and saddest days in the life of humankind. Today, we have assembled here the entire nation to mourn our departed leader, His Excellency John Obiero Nyagarama. Lord, we thank you that you have given him time to serve this nation. You had given him time to serve his family, and you had given him time to serve you now it is a moment of darkest part of it that from a few days ago he has departed from us now in a very specific and particular way we want to commit this family he has left behind led by mongna now unto thy hands that you bless them you protect them you lead them and as we are in this life each one may decide to die the wise death Lord we thank you that you will give them strength and you give them power and you give them hope for thy soon advent. All these friends have come to mourn with them and to pray for them and to give them encouragement and to give them all that they need in this time of a lot of sorrowfulness in their souls. We thank you for the government, for the role that it has played to ensure that our leader is laid to rest, waiting for the soon advent of our Lord Jesus. We thank you for the friends, and we thank you for the Count of Nyamira, of which made him a leader in this nation. Now, Lord, we request that as thy soon advent appears, let none of his offspring miss the kingdom. As the Bible says, there is that great day when Isaiah and Job and the rest of the believers will proclaim when they see the advent of our Lord Jesus descending from the skies, that this is the Savior and the Lord that we have been waiting for, glory and honor unto God for that great day. Now, we thank you once again that you lead them and you help them in all wise. All leaders are with us. May you lead us again. 
as they comfort this family, as they say encouragement words, as each one prepare for the soon advent of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that each one of us to die a wise death. That when the Lord calls, when the Lord calls, each one will say, Lord, it is you that I have been holding on for in the grave. Blessed be thy name as you lead this family and all other families of our believed ones. Lord, we commit them unto thy hands. Blessed be thy name from now, forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Uh, thank you very much, Pastor. And I, I listened to you very keenly. I'm hoping that everybody who is here listened to our pastor very keenly. And that uh, knowing that we are transitory in this world, that you will prepare for the, that, that great day. Because for my brother John Yagarama, this is his great day. He had his great day when he came to this world. And this is his final day. Mama Naomi Nyagarama, and your children, Excellency Prime Minister Raila Molo Dinga, our CS, Dr. Fred Matiangi, the senators who are here, the, assist, the deputy governors who are here, led by my deputy, Josh Mahangi, and you are going to be introduced later. The members of parliament, senators, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we now move to another level. I would want to ask, uh, I do not know, we wanted to have some entertainment, minor entertainment. John was a man who was a nice man, smiling man. The Orare no more the group or the Avanya Congo team. I don't know if you are ready. If you are not ready, please prepare yourselves. I'll give you some time as I ask one or two people to talk to us. Then you can come in after that before I hand over to my brother, Senator Okongo Mogeni. As is our custom, I'm now going to ask two leaders, two elders of Kisi Abagusi to talk to us. The first one is a former member of parliament, Benson Kegoro, who is also a relative of uh, Honorable Nyagarama, Excellency Nyagarama. Mze Kegoro, if you are around, I want you to come. And as you are coming, It's okay, please. Uh, CS, you know you came in. CS Eugene Wamalwa is also in here. CS had not seen you. I sincerely apologize. Uh, and I don't know, I think I'm also growing old. Our Chief Justice, and also actually a relative of uh, Onyagarama is also in the room. Chief Justice, Your Lordship, I also sincerely apologize. Mze uh, Kegoro, I would ask also Mze James Matundura if you are around, please. And we want to make this very, very quick. If you can also come and wait here so that you can talk after that. While that group that was coming to talk to us, to, to sing to us, if they can also start preparing. I sincerely apologize, Chief Justice and Eugene Wamalo. Sincerely.
Asante sana Mwishimiwa wetu gabana James Yongwai Asante sana panafasi Ili ni mwililie Kiongozi wetu Mwana wetu Mwana wangu Obiero nyagarama Your Excellency Tumiona Kiongozi wetu Raido dinga mengia hapa Na miandamana Na watu wote Wa serekali ya Kenya Kutoka serekali kumba Kwa serekali za Sachini Sa counties Kwa majina mimi naitua Benson Kegoro Ogero Mimi ni mmoja Wa elders wa kisi hapa Kama mtu ambaye likuwa mmoja wa wajumbe Wakati wa enzi za msee jomo kenyata Wakati ule tulianza kasi 1963 Kulikuwa kuna majimbo Na majimbo mimi nilijaguliwa kama katika jimbo la nyanza Na katika ile majimbo tulikuwa na kiongozi wetu mkuwa Mbangawa tulikuwa na president Musee baba wa raida jaramo yogingo dinga Ndiye alikuwa waziri wetu sisi tukiwa katika majimbo Tulikuwa majimbo nane na Nairobi yetiwa extra provincial uh, region Tulifanya kasi na hao viongozi wakati ule Na badai miu nikachaguliwa tena kuenda member, kuwa member of parliament wa wesi mgirango Baada ya kifo Janet Morara Tuligawanya not mgirango ili ya zamani Ikawa, eh, ikawa uh, konsumia zimbi Nosi mungirangu ikabaki Na tukawa na wesi mungirangu Basi morara andia likuwa mchumbe wa, wa kwanza wa wesi mungirangu Baada ya kifo chake kule chabakali Mimi nikawa mjumbe ambali tukua mahali pake in 1970 Nikaenda parliament Vile vile nikafanya chini ya mse Ya uh, Wetu Jomo Kenyata Nilikuwa mjumbe wakati wake Ndiyo kusema wale ambaye Mekua wajumbe sasa sisi vile vile Tumekua wajumbe wakati huo <laughs> Na wakati huo tulikuwa wajumbe Ya baha tukua tukitumia pesa Watu walitupenda sana Hakukua kuna hii Mambo ya naitua corruption Tulikuwa na serekali nzuri Yungozi wazuri na watu walitupenda Nyakarama sasa ambaye tumekuja kumulilia Wakati kwa 1970 ni kuchaguliwa kabai election ya murara Alikuwa mpika kura wangu Badaye tukawa na gai nyakarama Akiwa mju, akiwa mwalimu Badaye tukachaguliwa na nyakarama 1994 Akawa board member wa KTDA na mimi nikabaki kuwa director wa Nyansengo Tea Factory Kwa miaka michache Sasa nimekuja hapa kulia Na kutoa rambirambi sangu Kwa jamii ya nyagarama Ameaja mama Naumi mbae ni mtoto wangu Hameaja wajukuu na watoto Watoto wengine wanyagarama wako ngamba wandasoma Mimi ningeomba Kwamba yule amba atachukua ushukani wanyagarama Wana Amos Uendelea kufanya kasi na watu wanyagarama Mile bile Ningeomba uh, CS wetu wana matiani Amba hamefanya kasi mzuri sana Aungana na president wetu ambayo mulifanya kasi mzuri 
kwa sababu hawa watu hawawezi kuuliza au kusoma kutoa mapendekezo yao wakati huo ningeuliza CS Matiani baada ya hao watu kulia upate nafasi uweke watu wa nyagarama tayari wakwambie matakwa yao ili kwamba ili kwamba ukienda kwa president umwambie matakwa ya watu wa nyagarama ni hawa ni haya nikimaliza wacha nitoe mifano miwili mfano mmoja ni wa watu wa jaramogi jaramogi alipoaga dunia kama watoto wake walikuwa wabaya raila hawa wangeweza kupata kura wangeambiwa kwenda tatua mi, kwenda tatua mikokoro yenu kwanza kule kabla hujaja kuchukua kutafuta kura vile vile wakati wa uhuru kenyata kama kenyata alivyokuwa kama walikuwa na mikokoro nyumbani waliambiwa hatukupati hatukupati kura kwenda tatua mikokoro yenu kwanza nyumbani na tunataka hivyo hivyo watoto wa nyagarama waendelee kuishi walindwe na wakati mmoja unawezekana mmoja wao anaweza kuwa kiongozi na mwulilia huyu great man apole sana CS wetu matiangi CS wetu matiangi pamoja na solicitor general na wale wengine wa wenzetu MPs wetu kaba na wetu watu wetu wa viongozi wote na watolea shukurani kubwa kabisa kwa mbambo ambaye mlifanya mkafanya hii masishi kuwa state for funeral ninyi mmetuzaisia sana mlifanya kazi mzuri thank you very much uh, mzee raila nimekuona kwa mamba yale ya bbi wewe sisi si, tuko pamoja na wewe And, uh, Your Excellency, the former Prime Minister, CS Wetu, Governors, Mbaye Wamekuja Kutoka, Semu Mbali Mbali Sa Kenya, Naviongosi Mbali Mbali, Mbaye Wameuturia Mazizi Haya, Ya Maana Sana, Huyu Anaongea Nichemsi Matundura Araka, Mimi Ni Chairman, wa Avagusi Elders Council lakini registration yetu iko Avagusi Cultural and Development Council sasa niko na mawili tatu tu peke yake kwanza nilitaka kuujuliza watu geni na watu yetu ya kwamba nimefaa hivi vile mnaniona to symbolize ya kwamba kusika mtu is a cultural event na chama chetu walisema ni onyeshe heshima ya elders council ya gusi mzima kwa kufaa hivi kwa niaba yao kiti ya pili huyu mzee gavana wetu alikuwa ni member ya council yetu kwa hivyo council ya gusi imesikitika kabisa kumpoteza mmoja wetu ambaye ni elder na vile vile yeye alikuwa tabia yake wengi wengi wetu atunge atunge iwesa kwa sababu hata ukitaka kuchesa na yeye hata ukitaka kufuruga yeye alikuwa anacheka lakini nafikiri sio kucheka ile ya ara labda alikuwa anakuchekerea uchuyu unasema nini aliendelea hivyo hivyo alikuwa anatuhimiza mambo mengi kwa hiyo tumepoteza huyu na tunasikitika sana kwa haya kumalizia kwa sababu wengi, wengi wetu wako hapa na watatuhimiza kidogo tumekuja kwa mambo mawili namba moja tumekuja kufanya prayers sire pasta Samuel amefanya ya pili ni kuombereza jamii kuwapa pole na siji kama nitakosea kuambia wenzetu ya kwamba tavatari 
kwa utamatuni wetu wa wakisi tukija kufanya masisi kama haya hatutaki